to the nearest bus stop. And I got on the bus with a bunch of people and I rode it to the end of the line. But I knew my phone number. And so when I got there and they discovered that I was by myself and everybody had gotten off the bus, they were trying to figure out how to get me home and I gave them my phone number and they called my parents. So from that day on, you know, I was the kid with the tether just to make sure that Kathy didn't go too far. Sorry, I was just one of those kids. All right, I'm glad you guys are here. Are you glad you're here? Yes. 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 You know, I did the uh, Colorado, it was the uh, Carolinas Association for Chamber of Commerce Executives. And we had a pretty good showing, about 70 people. And when we were done with the conference, people were saying how upset they were that their colleagues hadn't been there. Because it was a great conference. And we said, well, you know, we were here, right? We're the ones who got to have all the cutting edge stuff to go home and do. So hallelujah for us. And you know, we'll just write about it, right? We'll blog about it, put it on social media, and they'll say, darn, I missed a great conference. So that's what's going to happen to this one. Right? Yes. Yeah. So did you enjoy the first presentation? Yes. Yeah? Good. Yeah, because Salem Chamber is definitely doing a lot of really, really good things. So there's been a lot of talk lately about whether or not chambers are relevant. Have you been kind of tuning in to those conversations? Yeah? How does that make you feel? <laughs> Uneasy. Uneasy. The state agency, right? Sometimes that's who we are like in contention with. So I thought, oh my God, my own family doesn't know what I do. We're really in trouble, okay? So I think that's part of our problem. Oh, I don't want to go over that too fast. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to spend just a little bit of time looking at hindsight. Hindsight's 2020. You've heard that, right? Hindsight means, I'll get out of your guy's way and see if my tether stretches that far. This is like the extent of my yard. <laughs> your life really hasn't changed much since you're a child. It sure has not, <laughs> except, no, except most of the time I don't get tethered. <laughs> except this time I decided that we were going to put some videos up on YouTube. In order to do that, you've got to get videotaped. So... That's why Greg's here. <laughs> and he says, well, then you got to get tethered to make sure that the sound quality really shows up, right? So it's better than your sort of flip camera. So hindsight 2020. Oftentimes when we do our planning sessions, tell me if you feel that this happens to you. You do your strategic planning sessions, and sometimes you feel like all you're doing is updating the plan you already had. Does that happen? Yeah. So I call that rear view mirror planning. All we're doing is updating it, right? Tweaking it a little bit, it's good for another three years. Hmm, well if hindsight's supposed to be 2020, then we should learn from that. We should learn from the past. That's the benefit of the rear view mirror. I had a boss once who used to get really irritated at staff meetings because somebody would come up with an idea and someone else would say, we did that before and it didn't work. You're used to that conversation, right? That. Is that comment rear view mirror or windshield? Because it might work if we did something different with it, right? That would be a different conversation. So he would always catch us, and when someone would say, did that before, rear view mirror or windshield? And go, mm, rear view mirror. And he goes, and might it work if it was different? Yes, because he wanted us to always be navigating the windshield because he used to get upset with us and say, I don't know about you guys, we can't get very far looking in the rearview mirror. We have association friends. It always concerns me, at least in the first year, when all the chamber people sit together and all the other association people sit together. It's kind of like, well, we're two different breeds. And usually by the fourth year, there's a lot more collaborating going on, right? And that's a good thing, because I'll tell you, where the cutting edge ideas are is in the association world, not necessarily ours. So we can't just benchmark with each other. We have to pay attention to what other associations are doing. Okay? 
right? Because sometimes the best ideas come from outside your backyard. So you have to be willing to pay attention. So we're going to talk about association trends. We're also going to talk about some shifts that we have to make. Okay. How so? How did eBay help your members? Gave them an outlet to compete on the global market. Yeah, gave them an outlet to compete in the global market, right? My brother, most of my family lives in Hawaii. I'm the only sibling out of four that lives on the mainland, they call that, right? <laughs> And my brother Larry is an avid guitar collector. So he calls me up and he says, hey, I bought a new guitar on eBay. Can you go pick it up for me? Because shipping is about as high as the guitar was, right? So he goes, it's on Federal Avenue. You know where that is? I'm like, well, yeah, Federal, that kind of goes a long ways, right? It's in Denver. I said, depends what part. And this little gu guitar shop that he wanted me to go to was not in the best neighborhood in town, okay? I go there and I pick up the guitar. And I asked the guys who owned the shop, I said, so how has eBay changed your business? And I said, well, it used to be that the right person had to walk into the store and buy this guitar. And now, he said, we put it on eBay and it's gone, like within the first couple of hours. And it, so, you're a nice sister. I'm a nice sister, <laughs> right? But those guys said it's really changed their business. But think about people who collect things and antiques and people who have excess inventory. Sarbane-Oxley? Yes, yes. Sarbane-Oxley? Yeah. Look at all that. Right? The whole thing about transparency came about making sure that people were really going to have their pension plans and 401ks in place, right? That created, there was already a lot of mistrust with businesses. That just made it worse. What about, I'm going to change that slide. Gas prices, ah, $4 <laughs> or higher. Did you see that coming 10 years ago? I was at the... Louisiana Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives speaking on that Friday. Hurricane hit on Sunday. For a while there, I thought it was a storm chaser. And the gal who um, picked me up from the airport, uh, Angela Laborde, she's now um, president of the Greenwood Chamber in South Carolina, she was on the phone talking about this luncheon on Monday and all the plans. And I said, aren't you thinking maybe you should cancel that luncheon? Oh, sweetie. We haven't been hit by a hurricane in like 30 years. It's not going to hit us. I don't know about you guys, but being from Hawaii, well, we take those kind of hurricane warnings pretty seriously because we have been through quite a few of them. Yeah, and then at ACCE, remember Hurricane Charlie? Yeah, we were there for that. Boy, just making me a little nervous. How about iPhone? and apps. How's that changed things in your world? Pretty, pretty remarkably? Can you imagine living without a phone that didn't have apps or a touch screen? <laughs> yes. Yes, and it's also brought our businesses to the mo that whole mobile world, right? All of our websites have to be able to be seen on our mobile phone. Retail coupons, right? Now with GPS, did you know that retailers can ask, they can send you coupons based on where you are? Just because it's... The other thing that I don't know if you're aware of is that that platform is open source, which means anybody can design an app, right? For 99 cents, 2.99, I keep telling my son, who's a computer programmer, got to come up with an app. Look all the money they're making, right? So that's, that's so incredible. What about social media? Did you see that coming 10 years ago? How many of you thought it might be a fad? It was 
not going to last. Oh, no, okay. You thought it was a fast? Remember the, 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 big, the big rides, right? But we definitely had a lot of valleys. So here's what I want you to do at your table. I want you to, I want you to answer this. So you're looking back, let's just say five years ago. Five years ago, if you guys had known what? The chamber would be a lot better off. Your chamber would be a lot better off if you knew what five years ago. So let me give you just a few minutes, okay? And think, hmm. And we'll go around to each table and we'll collect that answer. Sure. Um, yeah. Sure that's really no, 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 it's true. You know, in Hawaii, in 1994, we hit a recession. We hit a recession because the Japanese stock market crashed. That's the number one travel visitor market for Hawaii. The amount of discretionary money that Japanese people spend is five to one compared to Americans. And they stopped coming, right? That year, I watched 400 of my members go out of business. And the Visitors Bureau kept saying, oh, we've been marketing to the Japanese for 50 years. And we kept saying, we need to diversify. We're not the only beach, <laughs> right? Because, you know, now it's Guam and Mexico and Costa Rica and Puerto Rico, right? But, you know, Hawaii was sort of the place you went to. It was either that or the Caribbean. And I remember the chamber, you know, having odds with the Visitors Bureau because they spent all their marketing dollars pretty much on marketing to the Japanese. And we said, that's a bubble that just can't, it can't be sustainable in the future. But the Visitors Bureau said, no. And when it crashed... It was a scary time. Desert Storm emptied out two bases that year, and all the sugarcane plantations that same year closed because they discovered it was cheaper to grow sugar in third world countries than in Hawaii. You know, reinvent themselves and say, hey, this market may not be coming back. Right? Scary. Scary times. So that's all hindsight. You ready to look at foresight? Yes. Okay. I'm going to walk through eight buckets of trends, and these are just some of them. Uh, the Carl Albrecht group tracks about 300 trends, and these are some of those trends. Okay. These are not all the trends that they track. These are just probably the ones that I think are huge and for us to be paying attention to. So under social, this big category called social is social dynamics. It has to do with demographics and the fact that our demographics have slowly been changing, have they not? Such as, this is the generation of digital natives. Hmm, what does that mean? We are becoming the generation, slowly, after the boomers, like us, where all they know is digital. My son's a, a Y, he'll be 31 next month. I remember when he was 14 and he opened up one of my record albums and he took out the LP and he goes, what's this? <laughs> I said, it's a record. He goes, what's it do? It has songs on it. He said, how do you play it? I said, and I, I still have a turntable. And I showed him, I said, well, you put it on the turntable, and the turntable's got this little diamond stylus, and you put it, see those rings? He goes, yeah. Well, each of those rings is the start of a song, and you put the needle right in front of the song you want to play. He goes, how do you know what song you want to play? Well, you have to read, you know, so it could be the fifth song or the tenth song, <laughs> and you could just see his face. And he's like, so what happens if you want to skip a song? 
you pick up the stylus and you move it. <laughs> and he turns it over and he goes, and there's rings on the back, so there are songs on the back too? I said, yes. And how do you play those? You flip it over. <laughs> it's like, not like a CD, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he said, Mom, that is so archaic. Do you guys have CDs? I said, Wait, CDs haven't been around that long, Jason. Right? But he had no concept at 14. Like, oh my God, it is aging population, right? The grain workforce, the boomers, we've already started to retire. Scary, right? That's going to create all kinds of problems like shortages, staff shortages. They're already appearing in nursing and engineering. You know that China and India both graduate like 300,000 engineers a year, and we graduate 50,000 amongst all our universities. There's still a world shortage of engineers. I listened to an executive at Dell talking about all the great developments they have in China and India. And someone from the audience said, look, I just graduated with my engineering degree. What about a job in the US? And he said, don't have them. You want to run a project team in China or India, and you want to name your salary, I will hire you today, and you will be there tomorrow. But I don't need you to run a project team for me in the US. Wow, those kids were bummed. Because for the first time, they have a middle class, right? And they're going places. People I've talked to around the country say they're already seeing as much as a 30% increase in the Chinese coming to them. So you want to market your destination? That may be a good market to market to rather than the Japanese, right? And the young Indians, right? That's where the growth is. Why do you think Microsoft and Dell have plants in China and India? Because that's where the boom is, okay? The Y generation, they live first, work second. What does that mean? That's a trend amongst our young people. What does that mean? It's not their work life. They are going to pick where they want to live and then find a job. You know how many people come to Colorado and tell you that story? I just did parts of the US where this would not be happening for you. E-learning. You know that one of the first e-learning universities was actually right here in the tech center? Wasn't that Jones University? And then University of Phoenix? People probably thought they were crazy. Right, because they saw this coming. These are the current trends. This is what's all around us. And some people had foresight and said, hmm, I actually think that's gonna be a market, you know? The gap between the have and have nots and middle class is shrinking. There are more people that are poor and there are more people that are rich. So the divide has gotten bigger. Same issues around education. Huge divides. That's a problem. Round and it will grow trees. They actually purchased land in the, um, in the Amazon rainforest because they wanted to make sure that the herbs that they were using would not get bulldozed over because of progress. So they actually bought the land with those farms and they pay those farmers to continue to grow those herbs. It's a socially responsible company. And Boulder actually has a lot of those kinds of companies. 